What are we gonna talk today about? Hey there, nice to see you here. Hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna be talking about the best books in translation that I read in 2021. Now just to clarify, these books did not come out in 2021. Maybe, maybe one of them did. I'm not entirely sure, but they're the ones that I read in 2021. I do have primarily four books that I want to talk to you about today, but I did want to go ahead and mention two other ones that I've already talked about in my best books of 2021. The first one of those is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and this was translated by Ginny Tapley. This was one of my two favorite books of 2021. I loved Convenience Store Woman. It's so good. If you want to hear a little bit more, I'll go ahead and link my best books of 2021 video. That way you can go ahead and check it out. And then the second book that I briefly want to mention is Earth Eater by Dolores Reyes, and this was translated by Julia Sanchez. This was another favorite book of mine in 2021 overall. It's painfully beautiful. It gives a voice to the voiceless. It's set in Argentina. It's just, it's so good. And again, you can hear more of my thoughts in my best of 2021. So I will leave that below. So now that we got those two out of the way, there are four other books that I really wanted to talk about today. Let's start off with the first one, and that is The Devotion of Suspect X by Kaigo Higashino and this is translated by Alexander O. Smith and this I would say is a procedural Japanese mystery and it's so so good and the premise of this is that right off the bat we as a reader know who has been killed and we're following two timelines that of the perpetrator and that of a detective and this one we're following detective Kusanagi as he's trying to find out who killed this man we also have this other character who's a physicist his name is Yugawa and it's interesting interesting because he's sort of assisting the detective in finding out who killed this person and he has very unique ways of thinking so I really enjoyed that aspect of the story but he's also really good friends with the perpetrator and so it's just interesting to see how it all develops and how all of the plot points come together I thought it was done in a very creative and very masterful way and in a way that also kept me really engaged because you find out right off the bat who dies and who does it and going into a book like this I thought that I wouldn't be entertained enough or riveted enough to keep reading but, but oh boy was I wrong so in this one we are following our main character Yasuko and she has a daughter that she's caring for they live in Tokyo and she works at this Tokyo bento box restaurant and from what we can gather her husband and her daughter's father isn't the best person around and he often extorts her and asks her for money and so she she did move her and her daughter away from him to Tokyo to put distance between them until he finds them and so the story kind of takes off from there if you're someone who loves mysteries and you just haven't tried Japanese mysteries I think this is a great one to just dive right in and it's just it was so so good the next book on this list is one that I've already talked about in a lot of my videos but I just wanted to briefly talk about it now and this is Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin and this is translated by Megan McDowell and this is a sort of dystopian sci-fi and in this world we have developed the technology to have kentuckys which are if you can think about them as like furries is that what they're called furbies not furries furbies that are sort of wired and you can either be a dweller or a keeper and so if you're a dweller you can actually control the kentucky that is in someone else's house so that's that's the that's the interesting part about this that if you're your keeper the kentucky that you have with you is someone else from anywhere else in the world and it sort of gives you insights into the way that other people live around the world so like I mentioned if you're a keeper you have a Kentucky and it dwells in your home you can't shut it off and you have no control over it but they live in your home this book really touches on a lot of themes but primarily it's about privacy about human connection and intimacy and what that looks like in a more digital world where we're able to again inhabit these Kentuckys and live in someone else's home it's also set up in a very interesting way it is a novel but it's set up as a series of almost short stories and it keeps alternating between a dweller and a keeper and different parts of the world and really as a reader you're getting a little bit of a glimpse into a dweller in one part of the world and then a keeper in a different part of the world and these short stories only really give you a glimpse so as a reader there's never really a so what uh, so I did want to point that out because if you're someone that needs a so what at the end 
you're going to be extremely disappointed. It's, it's really just looking at people and behavior and human connection, and I thought it was fantastic. The next book on this list is another one that I have also talked about, and the more I think about it, the more I like it, but the less I want to reread it. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe I will reread it sometime this year, but that is Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Basterica. This was translated by Sarah Moses, and this is a dystopian horror book. And this one is a weird one. It has a lot of body horror. It has a lot of violence. So do look up trigger warnings before diving into this one. But this one is set in a world that is very similar to our own, except that there was a zoonotic virus that basically made it where we couldn't eat or ingest any animal meat because it would be toxic to us. And in order to sort of fill the gap of the meat industry, we started to breed humans and consume them as meat. And so that's really horrifying and very gory. And the weird thing in all of this is that Agustina Basterica makes it seem so normal. Like as a reader, I can actually see us as a society getting to that point. And it's scary. It's so scary. The story is also sort of told in this almost clinical way that is a devote of emotion and I think that really just speaks to the way that we as humans can so easily other a specific group of people and, and in this particular case it would be the humans that we are breeding in order to consume them later and so really it's an insightful read about human behavior and about the way that we use language to desensitize ourselves to groups of people in the book and in this world people are not allowed to use the word cannibalism they call it special meat Honestly, it was a super interesting book. It's just about how humans exploit other humans, but it can be very gory. So if that sounds something that is up your alley, I would suggest checking it out. And if you couldn't already tell that I love Argentinian literature by now, <laughs> here is another work of art by an Argentinian author. And this is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez. And this was also translated by Megan McDowell. And this is a collection of short, horror stories that blend in aspects of both magical realism and urban realism. A lot of these stories explore complex social issues. They're brutal, they're spooky, they're unsettling, and they're gory. And also a lot of them really talk about the human condition and the human experience, but with a horror twist. So a lot of them are unconventional stories about homeless ghosts, about hungry women, about witches. There is one thing that I do want to point out that I overlooked when I first read this collection, but I saw this in a review that someone else wrote. In one of the short stories, there is a word that is used that can be triggering for trans people. So I did just want to briefly point that out, but I did really love this collection of horror short stories. They're, they're very mean spirited and very dark at times but they really make you analyze like i mentioned the human condition and they were just very thought-provoking these are the types of short stories that i like the ones where months afterwards or weeks after i'm still thinking about them because they were so thought-provoking but that being said they can be brutal and some people think that they just have shock value and they didn't really find any meanings but i will let you make that determination if you decide to pick them up so those were the four translated works that i wanted to talk about today let me know down below if you've read any great translated fiction this year, I would love to check it out. I'm trying to read more works by Latin American authors and I'm actually starting a project in 2022 to read more Latin American authors. So I will link the video down below if you're interested in joining. But other than that, I hope you're all having a gentle holiday break and I will see you on the next one. Bye!